Good timing. Good to have you, Gary. Thanks for making uh, the time for us, mate. Oh, it's all right, mate. And, Anytime. And th thanks, Josh, for staying up way past bedtime for this. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, look, he's dropping off. That's <laughs> nah, fine. Yeah. This is, this is about the time I usually go to bed, so it's not that bad. Gary, right. tell us about that big totem behind you, man. The one to your... Totem. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's actually a shield um, from Papua New Guinea. Ah. Oh. Yeah. You've been some weird places, eh? Yeah, We're yeah, We're going to have to yeah. talk a bit about your places you've explored tonight. I didn't know you'd gone and spent time in Ethiopia and all those places yeah. that no one really, really wants to go and visit, but... No. Sometimes... I'm dragged there, to be honest, because <laughs> I've been to some weird places with mates, and then, you know, my wife is a bit more adventurous than I am, and she uh, books places like that. I'm like, and then tells you when you get home from that work. That sounds awesome, but I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> as long as I don't, as long as I don't read the warnings and the guidebooks that say don't go. I'll be right. Get all your shots. Oh. You get home. Yeah, you yeah. get home from work on a Friday, and Natalie hits you up and says, "Gary, you know that that two weeks that you've got off, your first holiday in five years, we're going yeah. to Ethiopia." <laughs> yeah. Well, no, she usually says, oh, "Actually, when we went to Ethiopia, it's like, oh, we're just going to do that because we're back in England for a bit. We always go back to England to see our folks." Yeah. Uh, so I was like going to Glastonbury Festival, big festival. Awesome party with my mates and all that. Three days later, Ethiopia. <laughs> like, oh, man. a little stopover. Over rest. A, a, a twenty-four hour layover. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I ask what happened to the original owner of that shield? I don't know. That shield I did happen to buy in a shop in Papua New Guinea, but I did buy a lot of other things that um, they were just in a market stall, basically. Yeah. Um, Sh shrunken heads. What are we talking um, about? That spooky thing over your shoulder? Yeah, but it's, I thought yeah, it was a yeah, totem. Yeah. I didn't buy any spooky heads, but the cutest looking thing that Natalie bought it was actually a skull, a skull rack. It's like this smiley man. It looks quite Aboriginal, but it's like a smiley, happy face. But there's like four sort of skull shaped holes <laughs> underneath it. It's a boundary marker for, wow. well, don't come into my area, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are the last yeah, four so. guys. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So that that shield behind you, that that face that, on it, is that, that shield, is that yeah. a sculpted face or is that like a dead it skin is, mask? It is, yeah, and it's taller than me. And Papua New Guineans are generally a lot shorter than me by about a head. And <laughs> so yeah, they just uh, it just protects their whole body. Is that and so they, they can? Just, they can. Just, Stand there, I think, and throw a, shoot, uh, throw a spear out now and again. Is that so they can protect against swooping pterodactyls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course so. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gary, man, anyway. awesome. yeah, it's uh, awesome uh, to have you on, Gary. Uh, we've thro I've thrown <laughs> this up tonight as a, r a rather impromptu one. Um, because we were going to take a bit of a breather over Christmas, but um, uh, oh, yeah. if the next one kicking off sort of January 10. But um, man, what what better timing? We're gonna have a real special Christmas. This is our special Christmas edition. Yeah. Hence, hence yeah. the Christmas tree. Well, can we sing? Can we sing Christmas carols then? If you want, Josh. At least one. Um, yes. Okay. And the time will be all jacked up because of delay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, right. Have you guys? Well, I think I think Gary was about to direct us. Oh well, have you noticed, uh, guys? Well, I was the... gonna direct you and run away. <laughs> yeah, my guitar. He does that. <laughs> Have you guys noticed that there's uh, there's a bit of a throwback in the timing? There's a bit of lip syncing going on, lip, lip issues on our on our uploads to YouTube. Yeah, our yeah last I think they're on, you. on the yeah. last one. Yeah, yeah, it's because of the delay between the audio being recorded and the the bandwidth sucky issues and right. Well, that's what I'm going with. There's actually, excuses and then there's reasons. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually watch them anyway. I just, I put them on in the back. I mean, I don't know why I'm listening to them anyway, because I participated, <laughs> but I put them on in the background. I guess just to quality control your bullshit. Yeah. Probably the reason yeah. I listen. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, that's 99% of each episode, isn't it? Your bullshit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're we actually going to start this thing? Might as well. Do you want to kick us off, Jonathan? Kick it. It's been a while. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. It's episode number what? Six. 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 Wow. Very special episode six. tonight. Christmas episode. We're, 
We're joined tonight by the uh, talented Mr. Gary Hunt. Hey. How you doing tonight, Gary? Hi, Gary. Hey. And uh, Gary, is, is, you're from the UK, but you're living in New Zealand, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Why don't you just start off by telling us what, what got you down there to the, uh, to the North Island? All right. Well, it was Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. And, What's that? Uh, What's that? Ah, oh, I don't know. It's some book they made once, and <laughs> I heard they were going to make a movie of it. Even though I'd seen the cartoon, the cartoon was cool when I was whatever <laughs> age I was when I saw it. Three. Yeah. I don't know. I was probably a bit older when I saw it. <laughs> but um, that cartoon actually blew my mind when I first saw it. Are you talking about the Ralph Bakshi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. the rotoscoping and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was really cool. I got a VHS copy at Goodwill. Yeah? Yeah, man. It works. Fun, huh? Do you have a VHS yeah. player, Jonathan? What's that? Do you have a VHS player? <laughs> I do. I got it at another Goodwill location. They still exist? Yeah. Mm. You could find them. I'm not they're sure. They're getting, they're getting a little well, they, they, haven't, they haven't quite come to New Zealand yet. So um, <laughs> I have to wait until they <laughs> yeah. come in and then go on sale. Still have a Betamax? Yeah. yeah. Right on. So, Gary, you were already a, a Lord of the Rings fan and you heard the, the movies were getting made. Yeah, right? yeah. So okay. they have been made, made over here and um, I was working in, not in the film industry in England, I was working in merchandise and toys, making, oh, you remember those uh, footballers with big heads and little bodies? Oh yeah. They did rugby players, American football players and did loads of them, nearly all the bodies. <laughs> and Were those made by uh, like the playing card companies? No, no. Tops. I thought Tops put them out. Vivid was the toy company that made them. When I was a kid, it seemed like you, we, we, there were little bobblehead or bubblehead, right? You know, football guys. Troy Aikman back in the cowboy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have Super been days. twenty years ago, I think, when I was working on them. Started working on them. Yeah, and loads of other stuff, toys, and yeah. I just thought, like, well. They're filming Lord of the Rings, I suppose I better go and try my luck. Might as well. Yeah. So I did, send, I did send my CV off before, while I was in England. Before you came, yeah. Yeah, but it took me a while to get my get my app together and get a CV together and then tie up all loose ends and go, right, I'm going on a holiday for three months to the boss. I may not be back. And I, I went traveling and ended up in Thailand and Cambodia <laughs> and went to see cousins and uncles in Australia. And then I ended up in New Zealand, and yeah, they were still filming, luckily, because <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, they'd started, I'd heard about it a year before I left, but I figured... So this was, what, 2000? Oh, two, uh, yeah, that was uh, the year 2000, yeah. Okay. So I probably heard about it in 99, yeah. So you just showed up and filled out an application and then... And... No, I just showed up and um, I actually had sent my CV again from Australia. But the day before I was flying over, I got a letter from Weta going, sorry guy, I'm uh, sorry, Gary, actually. I'm just, uh, we're just sort of a bit quiet right now and we don't really need anyone. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, 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 okay. uh -oh. Well, uh -oh. Not plane ticket, I'm going anyway. Got to see New Zealand, <laughs> run out of money, but hey, I'll just go and have a look and try my luck, see if I might be able to. And um, basically when I got there, I just, uh, I did call Weta again, and somebody said, oh no, the same same story, like, we don't need anyone right now. So then I was in the phone book, looking up for any type of arty type work I could get, and I had a couple of interviews um, the next day, I think, and the first one I went to, it was quite unbelievable, because I'd never heard of Wingnut Wings, uh, sorry, Wingnut Productions, yeah. and uh, I turned up to this interview, and there's this big sort of um, studio lot <laughs> and a port cabin, cabin and the guy opened this um, headed note paper that had a Lord of the Rings logo on it. I was like, whoa, what's this? <laughs> and I had an interview uh, with these guys, it seemed really cool. And they, um, they were more into the set design, so they were doing um, ar uh, little architectural buildings for the set. And I'd studied architecture and product design at college, so I was like, oh, I can do architectural models, yeah. 
and they're like, we'll give you a go. Uh, there's a bit of a break at the moment, but just keep in touch and um, we'll see what we can, if we can get you on. I was like, cool, but I'd run out of money, so I had to go to Auckland and that's where I got my job with Battlefront. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and met at Evan Allen as well. Yeah. Uh, later on. What did, so, you do, well, what did you do at Battlefront? Well, I basically worked for them for about seven weeks, but I didn't work on their World War Two stuff. They said, "What do you want to do?" I was, I was like, "Well, I'm in New Zealand. <laughs> um, I'm well into Maori Wars at the moment and learning the culture and the history of." New Zealand, um, and they're like, oh yeah, it's got to some of those. So I just uh, set my backpack, uh, sorry, in my backpackers, sculpting Maori War figures and constabulary, and um, did a bunch of them for about, yeah, probably six weeks. And they bought them. Uh, and they had pretty cool plans. They were going to release a game and all that. But um, then I got the call from the guys doing Lord of the Rings, and I went, okay, yeah. <laughs> See ya. I'll, uh, I'll start Monday. <laughs> but I keep so the Battlefront. And I did, did do a few figures after that. But um, yeah, they never released the, the game, or the figures, actually. I did see the figures, uh, Gary. You saw them? Yeah, I saw the figures. Right. Lovely figures. I don't know why they didn't release them. Yeah. But, uh, mate, there's no <laughs> rhyme or reason to what they, those guys do, so... I won't try to even explain that one away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, had you uh, had you done gaming figures before that, or those? Yeah, those? yeah, yeah. I um, well, that's how I learned to sculpt actually, like um, just buying Games Workshop figures and um, converting them. And because my dad had a, a toy shop and a market, I basically worked on the market stalls on Sundays and in the shop sometimes just for packets of figures. <laughs> Before that, it was Matchbox cars, and then it was like, um, yeah, Games Workshop and Grenadier, because we stopped Grenadier as well. Yep. And so we went to trade shows, and um, I got to chat with uh, generally the guys from Grenadier. Usually met the reps from Games Workshop, but um, like Nick Lund, I don't know if you remember Nick him. Nick Lund? The, the cool stuff. And the Fantasy the Warriors guy? Yeah. What's that? The What's that? Oh, sorry, the Fantasy Warriors? Is it Fantasy yeah, Warriors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, so he was a bit of a hero of mine at the time. Yeah, I loved those orcs and the trolls that he did, and the dwarfs. So, um, <coughs> old him. Yeah, got to yeah, old uh, hang out with him for a few hours now and again every year, I think. And, um, yeah, so I think I went through art, two art colleges, and I think they were sort of leading me down the graphics route and then down um, architectural design, uh, architectural model making and product design. Because uh, they they don't really really lead you down a route to fantasy figure stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the path least travelled. But in my a lot of money uh, on that. yeah, in my second course, they did um, they did push some some direction towards film uh, film effects, and some people probably were anticipating getting a job in that going in that direction but like our end of, end of year show it's like the only people on or jobs on the horizon really were architecture mm. model making and I sort of decided I didn't really want to do that so um, I just kept battering Grenadier I think and I sent them a few models now and again and they're like oh yeah pretty cool um, let's see if you can progress a bit more with um, uh, not really textures, but like just the differences between armor and pose and you know faces, hair, and then um, cloth work, yeah, mm -hmm. folds and in the cloth work, and then eventually they were like, oh yeah, cool, because I applied to Games Workshop at the time as well, but mainly doing goblins and stuff, and I think they had somebody <clears throat> doing that, probably Kev Adams, maybe. <laughs> Few others, yeah. Yeah. So, and I think they needed people on site. I think it was in Manchester then. They needed people to work on site, and I was still down in a place called Bournemouth in the south country, miles away. Uh, but Grenadier said I could work from home, so um, I started doing that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. What year was that? 
Um, ah, nine, 94? 93 or 94. Actually, I just remembered I had sculpted some for <coughs> that in between colleges. I'd um, sculpt my first ever sculpt, I think, really, at college, because we were doing graphics, was like a 90 millimeter minotaur I did. And I was working in a company doing die cast aeroplanes. So I was spray, spray painting camouflage onto Avro Lancasters and Spitfires and Messerschmitts and uh, painting all the wheels and the cockpits and gluing little guns in. And um, the boss was like, oh, you do a bit of sculpting. I, do, I, vul I run vulcanized rubber molds. Maybe if you sculpt some more, we could uh, try and sell them. So um, I sculpted up a bunch. Minotaur, a Cyclops, sort of in Harry Harrison sort of style, because cool. that was sort of influencing me at the time. You still have copies of those? Yeah, yeah, I have. Some in England, I've got a couple here. But um, there was a leprechaun dancing on a mushroom playing the table. Nice. That was for the tourists, because um, I grew up near Glastonbury. If you've heard of Glastonbury Festival, you might know it's a bit of a hippie fest. So you live in pixie country? Yeah, I do. I live. I lived in Somerset, which is there's lots of myth and legend around it, and lots of like uh, Avalon, King Arthur stories, yeah. and so it's quite cosmic. Awesome. So you grow up with all the crusties and hippies coming in <laughs> and influencing. Um, I just imagine I, Monty Python characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an American. You know, that's what we do. So you've yeah, been yeah. at the simplify things. Gary, you've been at the sculpting game now for about, what, 23, 24 years? Yeah, well, that minus was 91. Sh shit. So if you can work that out, we can't right that's, now. But, yeah. So that's, what, 25 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm still wearing my Ninja Turtles underwear. <laughs> that's because right. you're a baby. That's because you're a baby. We're old and you're a baby. Yeah, <laughs> Gary, you don't look a day over 25. I'm well, maybe turtles were out right before I started sculpting. <laughs> yeah. Don't know whether they had the underwear left. But. All right, so go back just a little bit to uh, getting the job on Lord of the Rings. You, oh, yeah. It was Wingnut Productions that initially gave you the yeah. job. Yeah. Look, look, at, said, right, guys, look, look at Jonathan tonight. He's been all assertive and stuff. He's making sure we don't steal his questions, Josh. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> good, good on you, Josh. You'd be assertive, man. Yeah. You, you right. tell those spiders. <laughs> All right, let me let me let oh, me yeah. ask my question, Anton. Wingnut. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wingnut Productions. Yeah. So. All right. So you, were they you were building arch architectural models? Is it? Um. Well, that was what they said. But when I got there on the day, they were like, "Ah, oh, we could give you some plasticine work to do." I think the first thing I did was this. Uh, yeah, I think there's a big hinge. Oh, I did no, I did a rivet. <laughs> A rivet for something on, in Minas Tirith, I think. I was like, yeah, a rivet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it had a little logo tree, maybe, or something like that. Rivet, the big but, um, the big then I made it up to a hinge, but the hinge was for the doors, and they were like, the I mean, hinge of Gondor. I think. So I had to make it look like beaten metal with rivets in them and stuff. So, and then the next thing they gave me. I don't know if you remember um, Kirith Angle. There were some vaults, like sort of skeletal vulture. Yeah, the gargoyle things. Yeah, uh, Kirith Angle, but yeah. you barely see them in the movie, to be honest. But Frodo encounters them when he's about to go up the stairs, doesn't he? No, oh, that's that's a um, Min uh, Minas Morgul. Ah, sorry, yeah. That's the other one. Wait, wait, wait. One is Sarah Sarah's 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 the other is Minas Morgul. Come on, yeah. Anton. No, sorry. You fucking, sorry. You fucking live in Middle Earth and you don't no, know the shit. Oh, no, no. Well, I think in the book, the watch is for Kerith Angle, you see. That's fine. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, the watch is at Kerith Angle. But anyway, they're a really cool design. And working with Alan Lee, it's like, whoa, Alan Lee. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, they were like, do this little maquette, and then you can sculpt it, it was like two and a half meters tall, I think, with a chainsaw. It was like, ah, <laughs> Poly I haven't carving. used a chainsaw before. In fact, the only sculpture I've made over one foot tall was a banana. 
In fact, that was in my portfolio. Look, I can sculpt large stuff in polystyrene. I've got this banana unzipping his skin, going, ah! Yeah, a banana awesome. for, a, for Tesco's, for a, a supermarket chain. Did you enjoy so the... the... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Did you enjoy the polycabbing? That was my yeah. fucking question. Oh. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, using a chainsaw yeah. was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Quite daunting. It was, yeah. Luckily, Brigitte, she's a fantastic sculptor. She worked with Geiger. She's, uh, she was amazing with the chainsaw. Yeah, it's a very so unforgiving you tool. with a, ma a maquette, and then it gets approved, and then you, you carved it yeah. with a chainsaw? Yeah. Um, you start with the maquette, you, um, you get it approved, you take all the measurements from it, and then you get your block polystyrene, and you can uh, transfer the measurements by whatever scale you're scaling up to and just draw it on with felt tip pens and you draw like a profile front view and then sort of uh, work out you could just hit it with a chainsaw or you can um, work it well you can work into it with a, a, a hot wire mm. yeah a, a hot wire first so you have two people one at each end this burning wire and it melts through the polystyrene and you follow the sort of contours of the shape mm -hmm. And you move it around and you do that and you sort of reduce it until it's like, yeah, now I hit it with a chainsaw or a, a grinder, which we didn't have on that job, but grinders are good. Hatches and and a, a fish billeting knife mm. for chipping out the polystyrene and then some uh, riffler files and then down to sandpaper. Yeah. And then someone hard coats it with either plaster or something a bit stronger, concrete, cement. Concrete, yeah. Yeah, or um, hard rubber type material. So did you come home with boots full of little polystyrene beads? Oh man, yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. It must have pissed Natalie off to no end. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, but I love, love yeah, it. Fumes fun. from the hot wire cutter, you start seeing hobbits running around your feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we had full face masks with filters and all that, but yeah, you can't wear them all the time. So I imagine the it, chainsaw it probably threw little foam balls everywhere. I'd want to start with like a hedge trimmer or something. Yeah, well, to be honest, these were electric ones. Yeah, I have the uh, petrol driven ones for like chopping down trees, making fangorn forest. We are like cutting up gorse bushes and screwing them into each other to make them look like trees and gorms. Mm. Yeah, like. At like half the scale too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, mm -hmm. they were probably about uh, eight foot tall. So you had a hand in that too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, I remember it was like a grid, so they could move it around, and it was so they can get yeah, different yeah. shots, and it always looked different. Yeah, that's right. No, Van Gogh Forest. Uh, yeah, we what, made these sort of. What madness drove you in there, Gary? What's that? What madness drove you in there? In. Fangorn Forest. No. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly that say, uh, I've also carved sculptures with a chainsaw. I bet Anton and yeah. Jonathan. I've done, I've done a lot of it. What, what did you carve? A tree yeah. stump? Wait, wait till you see Shannara. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. No, man. I'm well, not going to yeah. watch it. It looks terrible. Yeah, well, I, I, I flicked through a still. I flicked through a still from the trailer the other night to Jonathan, and it had the the Alvin halls and the elaborate doors. I sculpted all the handle work and the. This. But um, but most of the majority of my work, even though I hired as a sculptor, was um, poly carving. So it was uh, with electric chainsaws, and I did as hot as hard it was heavy work, but I did hours of the shit. It was yeah. Couldn't you just do it with a turkey carver? Uh, does the yeah, fine yeah. stuff does it have to be a chainsaw? But you also see like two meter tall griffins and things like that, wow. uh, and that's all done the same way, all all with chainsaws and slabs of poly. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It was, I haven't it was done it cool for a while. Fun. I'm a bit jealous actually. I remember I was, I was uh, giving you a running commentary, Gary. What's that? I, was, I gave you a bit of a running commentary as I was doing that sort of crap. You yeah, were, yeah. You were giving me yeah. the tips. <laughs> Yeah. So during all this time making uh, these Lord of the Rings movies, uh, were you sculpting miniatures at the same time, or is that just something that you do when you're yeah, not? Yeah, well, I carried on doing a little bit for Battlefront, and now I did have a job.
job with Wildly Inspired. Ah, Wildly Inspired mentioned. Are they that? still going? No, no. Um, they finished, a, I don't know, a long time ago. Ten years, maybe. And then somebody bought the company and carried on, but he really only bought it all because he wanted the spin casting machines. Uh, they carried on for a bit, and then he sold them, sold everything to someone in Auckland. Can't remember their name, but I, they do have a website selling Crusader miniatures. Stuff. I think it's... I made a whole, I made, I made a whole army of Mongol on horseback, and some Koreans, and a whole army of samurai, which is cool. But they're a bit rushed, to be honest, because uh, wasn't getting paid too much per figure, so they're a bit rushed. But <laughs> no, they were cool. So yeah. Um, then I guess I just wanted to sculpt my own stuff, really. Mm. Mm. I always get little freelance jobs with people outside of working at Weta and on films. So. Tell, tell us a bit about your freelance work, Gary. Yeah, like who? Uh, did a bit with Anton. Moon Anton, Game, uh, Moon Game Invaders. Yeah, we did a couple of board games. Yeah. For uh, Martin Wallace. Um, oh yeah, I've seen those look kind of guys, cartoonish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Yeah. So I and grabbed the monsters, and Anton grabbed the the characters, the soldiers, and stuff. Yeah, yeah that was a cool That's project to work cool. on. Martin's a great guy. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, guys, he's like board game royalty. He's moved from Manchester to um to uh, the Coromandel here, about two hours south of Auckland. Who are you talking <clears> about? Martin Wallace. Wallace. Yeah, he's a, he's a very well-known and well-respected board game designer. And um, he sort of wrote Gary into um, doing some work for him, and Gary wrote me in, and sort of the rest is history. But we got to work on Moongar Invaders, and then The Witches, the Terry Pratchett board game. Yeah, that's one did The Witches there. It's like really cool figures, yeah. And, but what what other sort of um, what other freelance... I mean, I know you've done a lot of museum sort of exhibitions oh, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, Gary. Yeah, I've done... Um, yeah, museum work um, is a gold mine up north. I did that about a year ago. I had to sculpt some horses and um, people working in the gold mine. And uh, for that, I did a whole um, Aztec um, Chinampas. Do you know what Chinampas are? Yep. <laughs> Have I pronounced it right? Floating islands, basically farms mm. around. Um, the capital city of Mexico at the time, which probably begins with a Q, and I can't pronounce right now. Quack, 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 quack. Something like that. Um, so, yeah, that was um, kit bashing, um, like, um, yeah, figures and painting them all up. And did a whale exhibition, sculpted some, uh, a Megalodon shark for. Uh, Museum in New Plymouth and a false tooth pelican. What scale? Uh, the Megalodon shark was life size, but it's probably a, it was probably a baby. To be honest. So I can't remember how long it was now. Only three stories. Six meters long. Six? Oh. No, no, it wasn't that long. It was big. There's a photo on my Facebook of me sitting next to it. Gary, can I ask you a question? Did, did you shit What's yourself that? when they said they'd like a one to one scale? Uh, nah. <laughs> I don't know. Just used to doing a lot of polycarbon. The bigger, mm. the better, I think. I don't. I'd already done a golem, golem mm. for the premiere of um, the Return of the King, and he was like four and a half meters from there to there. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it went up on the theater. On the yeah. Yeah. On and the Wellington roof, awesome. the and yeah, I remember seeing pictures of that as well. Yeah, yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, that was cool. What was that made out of? That was made out of polystyrene blocks, but it was around a scaffolding frame with a wooden box on it. And the sculpting was pretty quick. The main thing was planning it all out so it didn't blow off the roof and kill loads of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where do you think that is now? Where is that? Um, I think it's in storage. They did have they did have it on the Wellington Airport uh, roof at some point. That was the year there was a massive storm, and the roof blew off, 
but Gollum stayed there, luckily. So <laughs> it's like, thank God for that. For the listeners, that's pretty much every year in Wellington. It is, yeah. Mm. in the um the recent uh the hobbit ones in the wellington airport the uh one of gandalf and the the eagles uh no you weren't no. involved that project there was what was that the eagles and they golem. had golem of the fish and yeah oh smaug <laughs> so oh, yeah. yeah i um i was involved with smaug yeah the eagles i made one claw <laughs> <laughs> um but smaug i zbrushed which is digital sculpting, um, the head for that, that was using the asset from West Digital that they used from the movie. So they passed that over to me and um, put a bit more expression on it, a bit, change of a, a bit of a pose from the neck, but it's basically just the head. And um, yeah, created all the scales on it. And then they um, basically milled it out and um, milled it out in polystyrene and obviously you lose a bit of detail in the in the milling process so somebody has to work into it but they've got all the scales as a, basically a, a great texture map in 3d so they just have to make the creases deeper and all that because it's it had to be coated hard coated so that process also loses detail so they just have to keep working into it and putting the skin texture on that you might lose and uh, yeah so I worked on that and that was really cool that's, that's that cool from one to one scale that's a bit small as well because it would have been massive but Gary yeah. one of the first works I ever remember seeing of yours um, the sort of thing that sort of introduced me to your your sculpture was um, one of those collector items you did of uh, Ian McKellen's Gandalf I think that might oh, have been right. for Fellowship of the Ring and I've, uh, you know, I've, yeah. I've watched you know every year your progression through the the collectibles range of wheat, and you've done some absolutely mind blowing work. And now I see you've progressed very heavily into ZBrush, and I know that you know you yeah. sort of struggled with that to start with, but you've just you've mastered ZBrush now. And like uh, the, mastered it. <laughs> well, the most notable um, collectible I can I can think of off the top of my head right now would have to be the Smaug that you've done recently, that and the the Weta Collectors Edition Smaug. Right. Uh, and I mean that that thing is absolutely mind blowing. How did you find that transition from traditional clay sculpture with Chavant and those sort of materials materials to to the digital platform? Yeah, um, it was it was kind of. I think when I started, I felt like the sculpting part. I'd already had a history in sculpting, so it's like I can do this. It's just a matter of a bit of practice. But I think when I started, actually, um, the program is much better now. When I started, all the uh, polygons, which are the squares, that, um, the, the mesh that the, um, the object is made out, out of, and you start with a, a sphere, basically. You can pull it and stretch it, and then you can start sculpting it, as it were, yep. drawing on it. Um, but the polygons all started stretching, and it was like, ah. Oh, can't do this. I want to do a tooth, but they've all stretched. And I think uh, we say in the old days, because it was only about six years ago, you had to. <laughs> it was a huge process just to retopologize it and get it workable again in those areas. Unless, I guess, you were clever. You could have been clever and made each item a subtool, a tool in itself. Which obviously I do now. But at the time when you're just learning, you're like stretch it, stretch it, pull it, pull it, and it's like then you're left with something that's cool in that area, but it's really messy in that area. It's like ah, it's just um, and getting used to the interface and sorting out problems. That's the hard part. If you're already, if you can already draw and sculpt, I think the hard part, the hard part is learning the interface mm. and um, fixing problems. Because when problems turn up, you might have fixed it three months ago by looking up a video or something 
uh, and then it's like, oh, how did I do that? How did I do that? And you've got to go through it all again, unless you're like now, I think I'm picking it up because I'm working on it all day, every day. Yeah. And when problems come up, it's like, oh, I was doing that last week. Or I can go and ask someone. Um, but these days, there are a hell of a lot uh, more videos, uh, tutorials that you can buy or watch for free on YouTube. And it's, yeah, it's really quite handy. Yeah, the books to buy as well. And when I started, um, Scott... Spencer. Spencer, yeah. Um, he sort of gave us a few little lessons. Yeah. And so that was great initially. Um, but, yeah, remembering the process after that, on your own, a month later, so oh, I can't do this now. you just got to keep bashing at it until, until you, you've done it enough times to just uh, store it in your head. And so the next time it pops up, yeah, I can do that, sort it out, done. Yeah. Move on, carry on sculpting. Some people can pick it up just like that. Yeah. But not me. <laughs> Scott's no longer at Witter, is he? No, no. Uh, well, I think he may be at West Digital now. Okay. He moved to West Digital. I think he might still be there. Okay, I thought he was doing like an international sort of um, he's tutoring jets, circuit. Uh, he certainly jets around and, um, yeah, tut tutorials. Yeah, go -go, classes yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so going back just a little bit again, um, All right. you started, um, I think you said during filming still, right, for Lord of the Rings, and uh -huh. you've been with Weta ever since then. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me about the, uh, when you found out it was like confirmed that The Hobbit was going to happen, it was going to be made. How did you find that out and what was, the, what was the reaction to that? Oh, man. Um... I can't remember how we found out. In the always, lunchroom, Gary. It was always like It rumors. was in the lunchroom. <laughs> Probably. It was always like rumours, rumours. We're going to start on The Hobbit next year. We're going to start next year. <laughs> <laughs> and I think eventually it just turned up. I can't... But, um, yeah. Gary, like, the official... I'm totally the, up for it. The official like, call, yeah. Richard got everyone into the lunchroom. Because everyone had been but like, oh, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. All right. And he calls it and is like... It's happening. And everyone yeah. sort of looks at each other like, what? Is it, yeah, it really? it's, it's happening. Okay. Um, it's happening and we need staff and do you have any friends that are any good at this? Can right. you please call them and get them to start tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. how it... Sorry, <laughs> it's hard to remember because you get so many false starts. Mm. There's so many films that it's like, you're going to start on this next year or next month and then it's like, sometimes they don't turn up, sometimes they do. So yeah, yeah. But um, we were, I think, definitely when King Kong finished, we were like, we need to, We everybody just wanted to work on the Hobbit, basically. Yeah, probably before then. As soon as something's finished, we were always talking about it. Remember Ben Hawker was writing a script for it, you know? And so he got to get it going, you know? Let's write a script, this might push it forward, you know? So were you guys already working on it? before you found out that Peter Jackson was back to direct uh, it? Oh, he was kind of like you were considered... on it with um, Guillermo del Toro. Right. Yeah, so I um, can't remember, three years almost before Peter came back on. Mm. Yeah. And that was really cool, but as you probably watched the documentaries and stuff, pretty much all the work that was done was pushed aside and started afresh. Yeah. A new outlook, so... <clears throat> Yeah, it's, <laughs> that was quite hard, I guess, you know, three years of work. But yeah. it's like, yeah, fresh start, let's go for it. Gary, yeah. when I was, um, when I, sorry to butt in, when I was, when I was um, acting, doing a, my, went through the gig with the acting stuff that I was telling you about, um, I did a, uh, a stint on West Side Story, like the um, Outrageous Fortune prequels, and the guy, one of the main guys there was the original Azog. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. who had done all the filming right through with yeah. Guillermo del Toro only to finish it and then be told look we're not using any of it here's your check thanks all the best see yeah. you later yeah they did use a bit though did they yeah ah. um, when Gandalf is in the cage I mean, oh yeah 
the torturer. He's the guy that um, is, um, I think he's going to kill Gandalf or something, yeah? In the cage in Dol Gulda. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the makeup. Ah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Stephen Saunders sculpted that. I'm trying to remember the name of the actor now. And yeah, that was going to be the original, has, original. He's a real tall, skinny well. guy. Yeah. I yeah. forgot his name. Yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember right now. Uh, but apparently it wasn't, you know, sort of foreboding enough or sort of fixed it enough like, um... Yeah, like I'm not sure what it is. Mm. Yeah. There's loads of reasons, usually. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said, I've been through all that too. I mean, if yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Pixar, we would do that. You would, you know, the you work on a, you know, the original Monsters Inc. You know, for two years, and you throw away two years worth of work because you got to rewrite the story. I think we do that in every film. So. Wow. Oh shit! Yeah. Really? Very common. <laughs> very very common. Yes. No wonder it takes so long for Pixar films to come out, man. <laughs> <laughs> they've re- they've done them over out. three times. Yeah. How many? Was it fifteen uh, years? Or? Seventeen. 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 Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, this might take a second to click, but we had, for Toy Story 2, we had the third annual first time up on reels party. <laughs> Which meant we had rewritten the movie completely from start to, you know, from scratch. And celebrated three years, it. Three years in a row, right? So we were like, hey, third time's a charm, right? We've rewritten this movie from scratch again. Free piss uh, up, free piss up. That's crazy. <laughs> so that's, yeah. So, what yeah. and Pixar are no different. You throw a lot yeah. of shit at uh, it's, the it's the film industry, mm. isn't it? Really, it's just, that's what it's like. I'm, I'm sure it's like that in other industries as well. I don't know. I think what and Pixar have a lot of money to throw around. We can, we can afford to <laughs> throw stuff away, you know? <laughs> mm. yeah. So, like, the, Josh, the editing process is kind of different with those types of animated films, like, you said it have to be rewritten. Are you talking like the animation was done? And yeah, was... I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of animation will get thrown out. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you know, what if there had a bunch of animation for The Hobbit, but you, um, when you're doing your purely animated movies, we, we do storyboards, so, right. and then we actually take those storyboards. You, you've probably seen storyboards, and it's like a board full of these little cards, but we actually animate those a little bit. And so like... Yeah, so we, I think they call them. Yeah, kind of, but we start very simple, where it's just you know, you know, one well, frame every two seconds, or whatever, and there's some dialogue, and we do the whole film that way, you know, start to so you can sit there and watch it real time, uh, as storyboards, and that that's cheaper, right? That mm-hmm. you can draw thousands of those things a year, um, and then you can get the cadence of dialogue and, and the shots and the camera stuff from that. So. Uh, so that's how we start the edit process, and then right. And so after that's locked down and everybody agrees on that, then it, then we start the actual fleshing out. In a in a perfect world, yes. But often we start before that's all locked down, which is right. which is why you rewrite it again. Gotcha. Because yeah, it's. I mean, theoretically, you want it all greenlit before you start you know, the actual production work, but that I mean, that never happens for us. It probably nah. <laughs> it doesn't really happen. Even if it's all green lit, it's going to get changed at some yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. you know, everything looks good on, as a script on paper, as a storyboard, or as concept art. But when you get in there, you, know, you get different uh, emotions out of your actors or dialogue or whatever. You know, right. It's just not working or it needs to be changed and you want to go a different direction. So yeah, it's always like that. Cool. All right, Gary. So, uh, you did some makeup effects, right? Yeah, yeah. Did a bit of that as well. Um, like, like what? Uh, uh, prosthetics for. I didn't really have any lead, like full camera makeups. I did do one, but that film was pulled, and so we'll never see that. But hey, that's where it goes. Um, but I did. Um, uh, I did uh, a lot of the, a lot of work on the dwarfs, so. I did quite a few noses, ears, and um, actually, I did do a full. Uh, I did do a makeup for one of the dwarfs, the one that got pulled and left the production. Uh, nice. Yeah, I know. Um, 
I would have uh, pulled most I, of the hairstyles. What's that? <laughs> I said I would have pulled most of the hairstyles oh, that they look for. Are you uh, allowed to say that they look stupid? I can't say that. Uh, okay. Okay. I, okay. I, I can. Maybe, maybe I'll say, no, you can say that. Everybody can say what they want. But I guess I the love them. beards should have been a little bit of the beard. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on it. I'm working on yeah. it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I get a bit longer, but this is the way you know, I still prefer it these days. So, Gary, in a, in a quick sort of roundup, what films have you worked on that you're able to talk about? Just roll them off, mate. Um, in, in, in any form of sort of sculptural context, be it just, you know, sculptural yeah. pros prosthetic design or conceptual so like sculpture. The or whole bit, it was, um, I did a bit of design work. Some of it was um, digital ZBrush design work, and um, some of it was sculpting design work. And I did prosthetics and stuff so ears hand up oh, doors lots of hands a hell of a lot of hands and stunt doubles body doubles uh even some armor and like quid album quivers and things like that um yeah so what did that mean like leather work uh, no, actually, it was all sculpted, and they made a mold of it, made a sort of a, a type of rubber material, and then they painted it to look like leather or even metal. Um, so that's the whole bit. I didn't apply any makeup, um, but I did apply makeup on King Kong, which was an experience. Cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really. It, it's like trying. You've trained to be a dentist, so you're going to work with people really closely. I wanted to be a sculptor, <laughs> working with people really closely, taking their teeth out, washing them, doing their contact lenses and spraying up their nose because you can see a bit of, you know, like, cleaning in their ears and stuff. It's like, oh, I'm not really, yeah, yeah. this isn't yeah. really me. So, um, yeah, a bit of application, that'd be cool, but um, I'd rather just sculpt the prosthetics, to be honest, yeah. Gary, but did, did, it really helps having applied them hmm. to know um, how to sculpt the prosthetics now, like making the edges wafer thin and where you're going to break it up to fit it on a face. And um, obviously, you work on a plaster cast of the actor usually, so you can follow the contours or little um, crow's feet or whatever to get the best look and makeup you can. But having to apply it really helps. So, yeah just gives you the extra knowledge that you really need. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in King, King Kong, I did um, uh, lots of scannable maquettes. It was before um, most of the designs are made digitally and then animated. These were made with plastic scan and then animated. Um, well, they built tools from it using the scans and then animate it. But um, we did lots of dinosaurs, like uh, raptors and rexes, uh, bat creature, swamp fish, and yeah, did some makeup prosthetics for the natives and ah, uh, mummies and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> can't remember what else. Loads of stuff. Um, Lord of the Rings. I did poly carving on set. So it's like lots of statues of kings, like uh, three and a half meters tall. Yeah. Um, the gargoyles, minus Morgul, my favorite. Um, lots of little bits and bobs. Yeah, and... Rivets, you did a lot of rivets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hinges. Rivets. <laughs> and a wetter I did, uh, yeah. Fangon Forest, uh, trees, <laughs> out of using real trees, and fake trees made out of foam and rubber bark that we uh, puppeteered. That's cool. <laughs> um, For a tree beard? Yeah, I, I did. I didn't puppeteer him, but I did get to clean him up. He came out of storage and had to do some retakes, so I was like cleaning the dust off and making sure his beard was presentable again um, for some new takes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Not like Josh's. Oh, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Avatar. Did it on Avatar. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah, um, the Blue People movie. Yeah. Yeah, awesome what the, movie. What did you do on that? Um, to be honest, I didn't do much, but I did, it was work for Weta Digital. Basically, I made two mountain, well, a mountain with two sides. It was about, uh, like, four foot tall, and it had, and I had to do the lava tubes as well. So I made them in clay, they made a mold out of them, and they were like two different rock textures on either side of the mountain, and the lava tubes, and then they poured them in plaster of Paris, and I carved and chipped away the plaster of Paris to make it look like rock. So the lava tubes are probably the ones, I don't know whether they rebuilt them or whether they scanned them, they were supposed to scan them. And the rock faces, I think they scanned them, and so I think in the background you look at if they're passing by any rock, it could be the one I sculpted. I don't know. Sometimes I, I recognize that ledge there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not. Maybe it was just using photos from uh, the rocks in Thailand, you know, those, um, those islands that yeah. look like the floating mountains. It's fascinating the, the amount of work that might have gone into making something yeah, like yeah. that. Might have yeah. gotten used, might not. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I yeah. mean, it, you know, it takes months to make and it only appears for like two seconds. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what else. Water Horse, that's a, a yeah. kid's movie about the Loch Ness Monster. Um, did scan all my cats for that. Um, I'm dying to ask, Gary, were you on the, yeah. the Mad Max team? The latest Mad Max oh, movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, I did some work on that and I think I saw it in the movie. There was an overall credit for Wetter Workshop, so yeah. Awesome. Never, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, I did a lot of dummies, don't know whether they were used, but like um, whenever someone gets run over or falls off a truck and they don't want to use a stuntman, a stuntman. Lots of albino Chuck war boys. Uh, okay. What's that? Lots of albino war boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I did, yeah, I did um, boils and scars and stuff. T tumors. And little, the tattoos, like the scarification. Cool. And yeah, I did that little stuff on <clears throat> Elysium as well. And oh, cool. Um, D9. Oh, District 9, of yeah. course. Yeah, did the, with, with other people, Lindsay Crummett and Bill Hunt and the Scott Paul Sculptor team, it was like, um, the Wickers makeup, uh, transformation makeup from the alien, uh, as he was turning into an alien, and I did, um, yeah, uh, full size sculpts of the alien itself. It was designed by Dave Ming, and he sculpted the head, and we sculpted the limbs and bodies, and I think they were used on the autopsy tables, and maybe for the digital artist to see a real one and, yeah, make their digital models from that. Uh, what else? Daybreakers. I did, Daybreakers. Uh, I, I did a lot of scars and stuff. Fingertips. May have done a set of teeth. Did a set of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know did, if I've uh, listed everything there. Did, uh, <laughs> uh, Wendy did something on Master and Commander. Didn't they oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Like Going back to rivets. <laughs> I you did planks too uh, yeah yeah I there was one ship and I think I put, put nearly all the rivets in because uh, there's a model making team but the sculpture room was out of work and then you did a bit of model making didn't you here's some here's some nails <laughs> I hammered them all in uh, I think it was both uh, paneling work maybe but yeah for mastery commander a good few hundred or more <laughs> yeah Oh, and I just remembered Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, of course. Oh, and yeah. Prince Caspian. So I sort of designed and sculpted the mask for the Talmarine um, soldiers in in Prince Caspian. And, ah, oh, like um, the castle. Sculpted all the rock work around the castle. Did a bit of painting or chipping on the castle, chipping it away, aging it. and. Bit of model making stuff, yeah. And Lion Witch Wardrobe. I don't know. I think I did a tiny bit of sculpture design, but just a tiny bit. Gary, with all this on, there you go. With all this <laughs> stuff yeah. going on, 
how on earth do you find time for Gary Hunt miniatures? I don't know. Um, I, I just uh, stay up to one o'clock yeah. every night. You don't sleep? You like Josh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm sure he needs five hours. <laughs> that's, about, that's about all I get. Yeah. I try and have six, but with a bit of faffing around, it's usually about five. And kids waking up. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes. I don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah. The other, you have, the other week. You have cats. Yeah. Cats. Yeah. Cats. Do they wake you up? Yes. Yeah. Every morning. <laughs> Every morning. We've got a rabbit living in, in the house at the moment. <laughs> Is he a pit? Yeah, yeah. But he was also going to keep injecting him. But he runs around. Doesn't wake us up, though. But, um, what are you injecting? Heroin. Medicine. medicine. Oh, okay. Is that what they call yeah. it? <laughs> Just, you know, we're fattening you up because we're going to eat them later, so we're giving them steroids. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> if the kids are watching, we're not going to no, do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, how do I find time? I don't know. I don't find enough time, to be honest. I'd like to do more sculpting, but um, there's a lot more involved in sculpting, as you guys would know. There's yeah. trying to market it, <laughs> yeah. and there's Facebooking, yeah. wasting time, <laughs> maybe. Oh, social <laughs> and, media. Uh, painting them up, and try and box them all up, and and uh, send them out to people, try and get you know make signs for shops and blah blah blah. Yeah, try and come up with more ideas, try and build a world try and do the historical ones, which I haven't done for about a year now, really. Mm. But historical ones, you, uh, figures usually involve a lot of research. <laughs> so you end up doing a bit of reading and, uh, yeah. That's so your 54 figure. mil stuff, right, Gary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know when I started out my company, as it were, for some reason, even though I've been doing 28 mil yeah, all my life. <laughs> um, just went, I'm going to do 54 mil. I don't know why exactly. Randomly? Just, it's what's a, that? Just randomly? Uh, you know, why not? It's a yeah. lovely scale to work with, 54 mil. There's a, there's a whole crowd out there that really loves the 54 mil stuff. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. You can just oh, go to town yeah. on it. And for historical pieces, 54 mil is it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But I think it's just that extra level of detail that yeah. you can put in. Which means you have to that, do that extra level of research. Yeah. yeah get the buttons. And measurements of buttons yeah. and stuff, you know? Rivets. Yeah, rivets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, that was cool. I mean, I started with some sci fi stuff, and uh, but my first one was a, an actual historical. It was a samurai, because I was quite into samurai, because I'd just done that 28 mil army, really. I was well, you have some 28 uh, millimeter uh, post-apocalyptic guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Then I moved on to that because um, that floats from a boat. It's like, um, yeah, I was well into Mad Max, like the original movies, and yeah. so glad to see this new one and get a chance to work on it a bit. Um, but yeah, like Judge Dredd has always sort of influenced me. And cool. 2001. But I don't know, that might be a bit boring on the tabletop. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but um, I don't know, sort of surrounded by people who like Tank Girl and things like that. So it sort of influenced me. Yeah. And I think when I worked for Grenadier and they folded, um, to cut a long story short, I'd done three months worth of fantasy figures for them. And uh, then I went on holiday to Thailand for three and a half months. And we before that we were working out, you know, it's going to be some royalty scheme we're working out, and I was sort of like, yeah, we're working out. We'll get it done when I get back from holiday. <laughs> but uh, so I didn't get paid for three months worth of work, you know, because <laughs> they went bankrupt. It's like I've been buying their stuff for, you know, 14, uh, fourteen years. I don't know how long. Yeah. So to this day, or something, you know, you still haven't been paid for that. Well, actually, um, sort of got paid in the fact that after 
a year or so, two years, I think, he sent me the molds, the original molds. Okay. And they were still in good condition. And I sold them to Wildly Inspired for the price of the mold and a little bit for the figure. So I actually did get paid in the end. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it was a long term payment scheme. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. But um you know, I nearly brought them back. <laughs> <laughs> this other guy hadn't got in to buy all the spin cats and stuff, I would have ended up buying them back anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, crazy. So um what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we're I went to Thailand. Oh yeah. Miniatures. Yeah. yeah. Miniatures. your post-apocalyptic stuff i mean you were doing you know the, oh this the... is it sorry um when they folded um they were doing uh future warriors yeah yeah i yeah, think look. uh who was that bob naismith yep yeah i think he he obviously everyone had left and uh, it was like i don't know what um doug carry what he was thinking it's like oh you know we could start another company and get you on board and you could maybe do some future warrior type stuff and i was so i was all sort of up for that and i think even in um thailand i've been drawing like mantis people which um 10 years later basically right i'm gonna start my own company and start with those figures that i was gonna do for grenadier basically nice. yeah and that was it <laughs> oh yeah so evolve from there, and um, if I if if I have more time to sculpt, and I didn't spread myself too thin to fantasy and um, historical miniatures, and didn't work at Weta, it would be a massive pile of figures, an amazing game, and Josh would be <laughs> releasing it. But that will come, won't it, Josh? Yeah, well, now yeah, now that you're working on, I mean, I think you showed some of your new zebra scopes. I mean, now that we will have some stuff that, that will have two factions, um, I really want to get in there and start doing some rule set for the Beastmen or Minotaurs or yeah. whatever we have to call them, uh, and, and your new guys, the Geladin, Geladin, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, I say Geladin. Geladin. <laughs> because oh, uh, I think David Attenborough says Gelada. So. <laughs> that's and the that's Baboon Warriors. That's right? the Baboon in Ethiopia. Perfect. So, Perfect. that. <laughs> Yeah, so no, I mean, we're definitely down to do that, right? I mean, you're right, you're kind of scattered, right? So there's a, bunch, there's a couple of figures here, there's a couple of figures here, there's not, there's not like, a, enough to sort of put together, like, a comprehensive yeah, yeah. sort of rules, but so, we're definitely getting there, yeah. That's why we're concentrating on the fantasy stuff right now, and, yeah. We'll and then, um, I've been talking to Anthony, uh, I didn't realize you getting your figures painted was, was such a pain, so uh, I'm going to start, right. Anthony's going to start painting your new releases for you. So you don't have to. Oh really? Whoa, whoa. Oh, cool, man. <laughs> well, we no, just—I mean, right. you always—you always send along painted pictures. Like, all right, well, Jerry's got it covered. But. Oh uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I. <laughs> Those three uh, hours of uh, spare time a day just go too fast, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know. Yeah, <coughs> it's hard to sit down and just paint that figure like I used to. And like, I used to be able to do them pretty quickly, but. When you're spread out, when you have your time spread out like that, and with kids waking up, mm -hmm. generally at 11 o'clock, or whenever you've mixed up something, you've just applied the first, um, like the first skin tone. <laughs> when you get back, it's semi-dried or something. It's like, oh man. Oh. Yeah. So that's yeah. the sort of thing that gets me, I think. Maybe we'll and get uh, Jonathan here to do something. Hey. Anytime, anything you send me, I'll be yeah oh that'd be cool i mean i mean the, the the thing i'd really want to see is like 
other people's take on it. Yep. So I, I mean, I can, I, I mean, I when I'm sculpting, I don't really have an idea about how it's going to be painted, but when I start painting, you know, obviously it comes through, and uh, it's just a, it's just great to see other people's paint jobs. Yeah. And like, oh, I, I started as a painter. I, I, I try to sculpt kind of to paint, you know, like sculpt, sculpt the, uh, the kind of textures that I want to paint and stuff like that. Yeah. That's because you like to paint. Yeah. That's uh -huh. how I start. <laughs> I like I like painting because he's talking about he doesn't really think about the painting process when he's yep. sculpting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, do. Well, I think Josh is a speed painter, aren't you, Josh? Dude, I, I so am. There, like, yeah. it's I'm putting the last coat on, and the first coat is still wet. <laughs> Take it. I've got a way of doing it though that it. I paint for you know I used to spend hours and hours trying to paint really nice figures. Now I paint just the stuff I'm going to play or that I need to get really quick. So. It's tabletop quality, but I can I can turn it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, since those um, Citadel ink washes have come out, yeah, it's like they're great. Yeah. I mean, the brown I don't know what it's called now, brown sepia type car. <laughs> I tend to go there. Every, for that. Wow. This is amazing skin. This fabric needs a bit of that too, you know. It's like, I, mean, I used to enjoy yeah. painting. No, I should I should just be able to sit down for an hour done send it to josh but mm. just doesn't happen that way I, if i if i i'm like no i've got to sit down and sculpt that gelada and i've got to cut it up and get it printable that's what i've got to do yeah you know? yeah Gary, i used um, to enjoy painting mate but now every time i i try to sit down and do it i feel i get i feel guilty that i'm not sculpting i so and that's, so it's like paints go away well, yeah because you know i'm paid to sculpt and okay. i'm paid to paint so i, I want to I want to do a good paint job, but I'm doing this too quickly now. I'm I've just, got okay. armies of Josh's shield wall stuff here, all assembled and based nicely and just ready for a lick of paint. And I just, I can't. We'll put it in a box and send it to California yeah. and let me paint it. <laughs> and that'll be that. Yeah, I won't yeah. ever get it back. <laughs> no, probably not. Well, no, Gary, so yeah, I, same thing I said to Anton years ago is. I think my job will be to make sure you've got all the time to sculpt that you want and you're not doing the crap you don't want to do. So we will uh, get them painted. Not only we will get them painted. Mm. Oh, that's, that's so cool. But yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Big easy <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. But I mean, I might try and paint one or two here and there. But, and I, I have, but if you I have can't, got... don't worry about it. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. And sometimes I start them and they just sit there. It's like, I'm finished. <laughs> so, yeah. And they nag at me. They, they, uh, you have them sitting there on your bench, giving you the fingers. What's that? They sit there going. Yeah, yeah. Same with all the other sculptures that mm. lie around. So well. Finish <laughs> me. Yeah, in endless totally. production line. Yeah, yeah. But Anton, you must have loads of figures lying around, yeah? Well, I mean, you're constantly sculpting, so. It's like... Dude, I've got um, I've got more than I can even think about dealing with at the moment and Josh always grieves me about that if, if yeah, I die was... and if I keep up this rate I will die young um, Kim's been instructed just to get a big black trash bag and just go scoop and mail to Josh <laughs> he, he gets over like 80% and then goes on and does something like this <laughs> in saying that though I always finish the figures I never I'll, I'll never leave a finish of, well no that's not true I do I leave shit unfinished all the time um but then I go back and finish it. Eventually, I finish everything. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the thing that's, is, that's like, after every you know, when I Skype with Josh, I come away with a hundred different ideas, on top of the hundred ideas we've already got. Yeah, yeah. Are you blaming me? Yeah, I'm, bla I'm blaming you, Quilt Disney. <laughs> because yeah, every time we talk, mate, I come back with more more ideas. Yeah. And I just think, ah, oh, shit. I'm the same. It's like, I don't know. You start talking to people. You start. Or you know, just a little figure, and then talk to Josh or someone. You know, formulate a whole war band, and then a monarchy <laughs> or something. You know, and then, and then a world. It's like ah, okay, that's that's only twenty years worth of work. <laughs> I like I and like I you thinking. Right now. I like you thinking in war band scale because that's sellable. We can yeah, sell yeah. war bands. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> it, it gets easier the more you talk to Josh, um, yeah. Gary. You, you, yeah. soon, you soon see that, that 
that method to the madness and things oh, get yeah. easier they get better yeah, yeah. <laughs> you start you start realizing that all this shit floating around in the the ether of your brain can be yeah. you know sort of curtailed well like channeled. doctors choir and everything they just all gel together yeah. it's a massive range right yeah it just very, it's very large <laughs> that's a lot i mean that's years of work right that's years and years yeah. of work that's, that's aaron and i do you do you know aaron brown um only on facebook only since i've been chatting with you basically you, you know? probably crossed his path one time walking through the hills mate Maybe. Yeah, I, was just, I, was just, I mean, he is, a, he is a total dirty hippie, but you know, he's a super <laughs> skilled like sculptor in New Zealand. I figured, like, yeah, yeah. All of, uh, he's amazing. His carving's yeah. amazing. But doesn't, I guess he doesn't leave his mountain home. I don't know. <laughs> well, his hobbit hole. It's, it's a long way from Wellington, to be honest. Where is he? Sure. He's, yeah, um, he's in, in, in Cam- Cambridge. Right, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Waikato. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you'll, you'll stumble across him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must. Yeah. I, love, I love his um, historical busts that he does. Mm. Oh, Super. I love the way he uses um, different materials. You know, he uses actual cloth and all sorts of random shit that yeah. he sort of yeah, puts yeah. it in. It just, it just works. It looks awesome. Yeah. The thing, the thing about it is, you know, so I'm not as good as the three of you at sculpting in traditional style. But I can kind of sculpt his carving. I don't even, like, I can't, I don't. I mean, I guess I've carved a little bit with a chainsaw too, but just mm. that fine detail of J stuff, I don't even, I don't even want to start. I wouldn't know where to start. It's crazy to me. Yeah, Whitland. yeah. He's Whitland. Whitland. Yeah. Whitland away. Yeah. yeah. With a dress, just... maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. I had yeah. to make a little stone for someone's wedding ring once, but it was like, oh, man. <laughs> it's just too much work. Like... Yeah, exactly. It's super hard to, to yeah. carve yeah. away stuff, especially, like, intricate detail on stuff. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to achieve those any, anywhere near a decent tolerance as well. Yeah, you know? actually, I used to do everything in Mill- Milliput. Did yeah. you, do you use that, Josh? I know Anton does. Yeah, did. yeah for uh, uh, I always, stuff. Yeah, I only started using it because of Anton. Right. Because uh, I, um, I hate green stuff. I can do it. But once I started mixing it with Milliput, I was like, holy right. shit. Mm-hmm. I wish I had done this 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah green stuff for weapons and vehicles is yeah. a bit... Yeah, so. Millie Pun. Oh, <laughs> you get that shit away. That's a supreme white. Yuck. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. That, goes that, that shit goes everywhere. Can't get it out of the. Additional yellow gray stuff. Yeah. I got my dirty yellow gray somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But that white stuff, you, you get it everywhere, man. Like, right. I'll, be, I'll be the dinner table, it'll be white stuff smeared. Look, look like something out of <laughs> Saruman's army. <laughs> 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 Sorry, the big white handprint. <laughs> oh, you guys are slow tonight. It must be. It must be about one o'clock over there or something. They're normally a lot quicker than this, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Sorry, no, no, no. I, I, Sorry, no, I was <laughs> trying not to say anything because I was taking your face covered in white stuff to a whole different. <laughs> based on the oh. conversation we had. Yeah, I was. Okay. <laughs> I'm not either. I'm yeah. not either. Right. <laughs> you piece. Jonathan just got it. Anyway, <laughs> moving on to is there time is there time difference between Oakland and Bakersfield? Yes. <laughs> uh, although I think he's further east, so I'm actually the one that's behind. Yeah, but you've got a major in astrophysics. Fair. Fair. <laughs> uh, so what are you working on next, Gary? Yeah. Yeah, Gary, pray tell. Tell in the Fantasy War range. Give us some sure. exclusives. Yeah. Some ex- exclusives. Well, yeah. Oh, um, as Josh mentioned earlier, I was working on gelatins, which are a cross between uh, an Ethiopian gelada baboon and a man. And uh, they've got some riding beasts, which uh, have a similar sort of look to them. Uh, so I'm working on them. They're, I'm, I'm doing them in the computer uh, using ZBrush. But um, I've got two figures finished, totally, and the riding beast. So I'm going to be cutting them up and getting them printed. Or cutting them up and sending them to Josh to print. I'm not sure what. I will print them. Cool. Yeah, and 
then I'll be sculpting some more of them <laughs> in Zbrush. Warband. Warband. Think warband. Warbands. Yeah, yeah. A warband. Yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna be sculpting some mercenary barbarians because I've already done the dwarf and the um, human barbarian, and the idea is to have them working together as a warband, uh, mercenaries that somehow have got together and have a common enemy, the monsters and beastmen maybe, because I can, cool. like taking cues from like real life and nature, like gelada baboons actually have a hierarchy but they have a, like a, they're vegetarian and they um live in family groups or big packs and um it's only really the alpha males that um start scrapping they've got the lips that roll back and the teeth that come out and um so that's pretty much the only aggression they have and i went to, to ethiopia a few years back um and uh got to hang them just for uh Probably only twenty minutes at close quarters, but they don't they don't really bear the teeth at me. They did at the local kids because the kids protect the crops, so they throw sticks and and stones at them. So they just basically bear their teeth and walk away. The gelada, uh, geladas. Um, but anyway, um, I'm thinking this could this sort of feel could carry on in the fantasy world. So there cross with humans, but they've obviously got land in this world that they may have once fought with the local humans, but um, they've, they've got technology as in weapons and bows, um, spears and shields, which maybe either are gifted because they're um, uh, mercenaries or they just join forces to stop nasty old Minotaurs coming over and taking their land. Those nasty Minotaurs. That sort of thing. So I'm going to work on that and maybe build some more sort of humanoid races around that. So are you going to keep them traditional or are you going to do them what you've done with the, the Baboon Warriors and, and do them um, digital? Or? I'm not too sure. I might do a mix of both. Mm. Um, I'm even thinking like sculpting dwarves. Say if I was doing an army of dwarves or even dwarf barbarians. I'd, I'd, I'm thinking I might sculpt the bodies digitally, pose them all, get them printed and sculpt the beards and green stuff. Hmm. Um, cool. See how it goes. Um, and, you know, add bags and pouches and stuff to mix it all up, make some changes. I mean, it's good you can do both. Because I find, I think, like, sculpting with, a, like, a, a scalpel or a pointy stick, you can maybe get better detail, like hair detail, than you can if you're trying to sculpt it digitally and you lose a bit sometimes in the print process. I know it's a lot of companies, when they sculpt digitally, they're leaving a lot of the hair out now. So it's like those, they've got all the forms, but they're not putting all the, all the like lines in, so it's clumps of hair, as it were. Mm. And I, I still want to keep the clumps of hair and that detail, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Because um, the gelat and the 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 riding beast is covered in hair, so when that gets printed, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I can chop and change. I've still got some armatures that, some elves that I might finish off in green stuff. Are they but, nagging you? Sorry. Are they nagging you from the shelf there? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes. But I am because I go to work. At, all day, every day now, digitally, and, and the printers are getting up, getting good now. Um, I'm sort of moving over over to that direction in my miniature work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I guess the trick is knowing how much detail to put on, because with digital programs, you've got that infinite zoom. <laughs> Just keep going and put more detail on. When you print it, it gets lost. But the uh, demon that I've just uh, sent to Josh and we've just released. Yep. That was my first digital print for my business. And okay, that was like 60 mil tall, um, but there's a lot of detail in it and it all seemed to come out. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going. If I can get those results, I'm going to carry on with this. Yeah. So there you go. Ah, that's cool. cool.
Um, Everybody froze. Oh, nope. No? Any other questions, guys? Uh, it's two in the morning here. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Gary, what what are the uh, what do your colleagues think of the miniatures business, mate? I mean, all your site, your all your uh, all your film buddies, obviously, yeah. um, do, uh, do they um, share the same interests in the miniature world, or I mean, we all come from different backgrounds? A yeah. Lot come, I mean, I sort of come from miniatures, the miniatures background to the film industry. A lot of people come from the horror movie side of it. Prosthetics. Which I, I know, obviously, I watched as well, but mm. yeah. So some people come in precisely, yeah, to do prosthetics, whereas I came in to do the sculpture, which obviously you need in prosthetics, but it's like, um, yeah, lots of different backgrounds. Um, there are people who collect miniatures and play them. Johnny Fraser Allen, yeah. um, someone's been doing some work for him. Yeah, he, he loves painting miniatures and sculpts. He's just uh, sculpting smaller now, um, but now the technology he can sculpt them, yeah. Three up and yeah. scan them and get them printed. He's uh, he's working on the labyrinth at the moment. The board, yeah, yeah, the labyrinth yeah. Game. But um, oh, that's cool. We're going to get Johnny on at some point too, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chinwag with him as well. Yeah. So um, but is he is he back from New York yet? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's back in. Back into the throw things. Yeah, yeah. He's busy with stuff. Yeah. He's always busy with stuff, but yeah. yeah. Do you ever do any work with him in in the miniatures field? Uh, no, no. We talk about it a lot, you know, like talk about figures and stuff, but I don't know, I think I just want to do my miniatures and yeah, I don't know, <laughs> that's it really. Um, sometimes it's like, oh, if you need a hand, I could do it for you, but you know, it's like... Yeah, about three hours of spare time a day. Yeah, exactly, mm. yeah. <laughs> Can't do it all. But here's, I'd love to work on his figures, you know, they're really cool, great designs, and I think the stuff you've been doing is awesome. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. Don't, don't tell him that, don't tell him yeah. don't, yeah. don't make right. his head big. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, you, you really enjoy the cartoony side of things as well, I do as well, because mm. um, they've got this slight cartoony style to them, yeah. and like when I was doing Moonga Invaders, they were cartoony style, and it's like, oh yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Moonga. And when I used to work in the toy industry, I did a lot of cartoony stuff, Simpsons and all that, and loads of toys, but if I'm sitting down, now I want to do gritty <laughs> realism if I can. Yeah. I yeah. I, f I found my um, my metal casts of all the Moongar range the other day when packing to move. Oh, right. I was like, oh, woohoo. Found those, I thought I'd lost them. Yeah. It's good, good time. It'd be cool to paint them up. I'm yeah, it would be. That. I just got the metal ones and washed them. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And the game's out now. Yeah, apparently it's just it's been released recently. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So be cool. Mo Moongar <laughs> Invaders. Uh, M O O N G H A. Moongar Invaders. Because um, we just we were given a bunch of conceptual illustrations to work off, so we didn't we didn't get any design input, but I think we achieved the likenesses on the uh, the character art. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to do, we had to deal with um, like injection molding as well, so we had to. Yeah, you know, change them slightly to fit into the injection molding process. And that was all done in China too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To be honest, he had a few problems. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That dragged on for a considerable amount of time. Took a while to come out. Mm. He got there. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at and, it now. <laughs> and uh, he's also done um, Grubbots. Yeah, he did the Doctor Grubbots board game. game. Yeah. I was I was hoping there were going to be figures for that actually. So was I. Hey. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've done quite a lot of figures for that little yeah. exhibition that went around for a while. And... Yeah. Actually, a long time ago, when he first started talking about it, um, yeah, um, I actually made it. Started making a fifty-four mil robot. But um, yeah, never finished it. In fact, I, I was looking at it going, "Oh, this is terrible." I'm, I've got to start again, basically, before I shut in. So, yeah. But you were doing you were doing loads of fifteen mil ones, yeah. Right? Yeah, they were cool. yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I think yeah. Uh, jo Jonathan's microphone stopped working, guys. Oh no. <laughs> so, in in uh, sign language, Jonathan, please. Right. <laughs> it's turned into a pumpkin. 
Oh, is he talking? Is he talking? Uh, yeah, I think he's. Uh, maybe maybe this is his way of saying it's CP times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's gonna he's gonna write. He's gonna write us a note and press it up against his camera. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Well, this is the first time I've experienced this sort of technical difficulty, Josh. We're going down the list. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did, you did press record this time, Anton, yeah? Yeah, uh, oh, right. uh, guys, <laughs> can you handle another couple of hours? It's only two in the morning. <laughs> well, um, that's, that's kind of it from me, Gary. If, uh, if the guys have anything else to add or, or ask in, or sign language, Jonathan, um, Mate, it's been great having you on, Gary. Uh, oh, would, would like to get you on great. on a regular basis. I've uh, uh, chatted a bit too much, I think. No, nah, it's... it's uh, good. I'll have questions good. for you guys next time, then. Yeah, it's good to actually meet you. Wait, Jonathan's coming <laughs> oh, This is the first time you've actually met Gary in the... F yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Emails, really. Yeah, we just email. Yeah. But, but Josh hasn't what, met... Um, I feel, feel like I've met you because I've seen six... Is it six or five podcasts? This is number six. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I know we can't say goodbye now. Oh, he, oh. he can wa he'll wave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gary, mate, thank you very much for your time tonight, buddy. Um, go and make Have the I... most of the, your your last spare hour and see what you can come up with. Have I got an hour? Yeah, I have. Yeah, you got about an hour before it's time to I, hit the set. I've got a, uh, yeah, ink wash and super glue some figures up. To get to the Weta Cave. Oh, Weta Cave. They sell in there and um, they sell all right, but they want them stuck to a base, ink washed. If you do minor tools, it's four pieces. Oh, Rich, like, oh. Richard Taylor is a very fussy man. You tell him that. Well, <laughs> you tell, Anton says you're a very fussy man, Richard. <laughs> I think it's the customers, eh, really? Mm. It's like that demographic, it's more high end. Where? I'm not, mm. I wouldn't say high end. It's, it's gift, gifts. Well, it's, kind, it's, kind it's, of, it's not a gaming store. It's, it's not a gaming store, basically. It's kind it's of high like, end, Gary, because there's nothing in there, a price tag okay. under a thousand bucks type deal. Yeah, that's it. My At least it's a tin, a tin, tin of, uh, graphic novel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I've been telling them too cheap. We should talk. I don't know. I'll just tell you. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. Price check. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to tell you, Josh. Cool. Hey guys, well I'm gonna call it a night for uh, okay. from my end. Well, Gary, let's let's get you on again real soon, eh? We'll probably do it again. Yeah. For a, for a very impromptu last minute one, this has been fantastic. So let's do one an organised one in the early new year, and right, uh, and yeah. keep keep regular tabs since you are effectively part of the brotherhood, mate. You're part of this this group that we're all right. in. We're all yeah. working together, so yeah. uh, it'll be nice to have you on regular. Okay. Sure. Let's get, Josh likes staying up what? to one in the morning. I won't be able to sculpt any figures though. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can sculpt while we talk. Yeah, okay. maybe if I get good at this. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Gary. Like, Skyping and being recorded, not really my thing, but hey. Oh, you did fine. You okay. did fine. It'll, be, it'll just... become your thing, Gary. That's good. Uh, cool. I'll okay. upload it tomorrow. Anton's a pro because he's been in Shorten Street. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. And other things, I'm sure. Well, yeah, a few other you things. You in Shannara? Um, no, I sacrificed that you role to, to do the back end work. So ah. I, was, I, was meant to have been an, I was meant to have been an elf. All oh, right. Mm, that would have been an ongoing thing, but um, no. In, in hindsight, um, I walked away from that to focus on flytrap because yeah, it just yeah. got too too busy. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and it's like, oh shit, deadlines are looming and deadlines are passing and. I'm spending more time out there doing that stuff than I am on my own, own business. So I made the call and walked away from it. But it was, it was right. fun. It will always be there if I ever wanted to go back, but I don't know, mate. Going got, back to like, the time thing that you're on about, like, wetter at the moment is, is crazy busy. And, like, it does get like that. And I have certainly done my time. I was in, like, 80-hour weeks and stuff. But yeah. these days I sort of do the 45 and... Could do a bit more if they really need it, but I, it's like now nah, I need to do the forty-five or fifty, and we're too old. Get for home, it. get home, and yeah, oh, we're yeah. too old for that. Need to get home, get the kids to bed, and uh, the Shinara film sets, and, 
The Shinara <laughs> film sets were rolling 24 hours a day, seven right. days a week. They had the guys in shifts completely. Mm. So that's, that's not my idea of a fun time. <laughs> no. Mm. The good, good thing about printing technology is that, sorry to traditional sculptors and all that who probably hate it. Oh, but, uh, oh. So you can sculpt something in ZBrush and you can have the printer running at night. So you can come in in the morning and get something else ready for it. It's like, so if it, when you see a whole load of stuff getting printed out for a movie, it feels like you have been working 24-7 for, right. for six weeks because you've yeah. been going hard 45 hours a week, but the printers have been doing this stuff for you. Right? So it's a good tool. I wish Jonathan would shut up. He's talking too much. and uh, so, he seems John to, Jonathan's just taken over the show. <laughs> I have I have words with him after this one. All right, let's cut it then. It's not on. We get a bad. I'm out. Okay, Josh. Have a good night. It's been great. See you, Jono. Thanks, Gary. Been awesome, mate. It's been great. Early New Year, you and me. Yes. Okay, buddy. Yeah, have have a great Christmas. Yeah, you too, New mate. Year. Well, we'll talk soon anyway. Yeah, yeah. And okay, we're always mate. on Facebook. See you, Jonathan. See you, Gary. Cheers, Anton. Jonathan. See you guys. Thank you.